To kick this thing off, let's just acknowledge that yes, Cody and Brandy Rhodes do exist, they just aren't on this particular list. They obviously qualify as wrestlers who have left AEW, but after going through their departures in great detail over and over and over again, I'm kind of tired of it, to be honest, and I'm going to leave it at that. Instead, today we're going to talk about the AEW departures that are a little bit further removed from the zeitgeist. Each of them are notable because, with a few exceptions, AEW don't release people before the end of their contracts. We'll cover a couple of those exceptions on the list, but Tony Khan isn't just cutting people willy-nilly. So with that in mind, I'm Andy from What Culture, and here are 10 wrestlers who no longer work for AEW. Number 10. B. Priestley this one is particularly interesting as the former B Priestley now works for WWE, where she can be found working on NXT UK as Blair Davenport. Debuting for AEW in July 2019, Priestley is best known for her brief feud with an early baby face Britt Baker, but was appearing on and off for the company until March 2020, balancing it with her commitments in Japan. But then the global bastard happened, and with Priestley unable to travel from her home in Japan to AEW shows in the United States, she was let go. That happened in August 2020, and 10 months later, she was signed by WWE. So, after all of that, it's safe to say that things worked out pretty well for her in the end. Number 9. Mel the former Melanie Cruz was used as part of everybody's favourite AEW stable, The Nightmare Collective, and showed her commitment to the cause by having her head shaved bald for the role in 2020. But in the end, she only wrestled in five matches for AEW, the last of which took place in August 2020. Absent without announcement for a lengthy period of time, Mel was the subject of a report from Fightful Sean Ross Sapp in July 2021, stating that Mel had found success in her day job away from wrestling and wasn't being factored into any AEW plans. On top of this, she was semi-active on the indies last year, so she hasn't left wrestling entirely, just AEW. Number 8. Awesome Kong Another member of the loved Nightmare Collective, Awesome Kong ended up leaving AEW for entirely different reasons to Mel. Having formally retired from wrestling in 2021 after taking time off the previous year to film the final season of GLOW. A legend of women's wrestling, Kong has found considerable success elsewhere. Her AEW run was a little brief, starting at the first Double or Nothing in May 2019 and effectively lasting just eight months, but such is life. In her prime, she could have easily been set up for a long, incredible run at the very top of the card. Number 7. Shima Another AEW career crushed by the COVID-19 pandemic, Shima and his Stronghearts lads have been restricted primarily to their home base in Japan since the world started falling apart in March 2020. Shima had originally been pinpointed as the go-between for a potential partnership between AEW and the upstart Chinese promotion OWE. But then, well, you know, the pandemic happened and... Here we are. It would have been cool to see the former Dragon Gate cornerstone do more in AEW, particularly as his Kenny Omega singles match was pretty great. But maybe we'll get more once international travel isn't such a pain in the arse, because I personally would love to see Stronghearts back in AEW. Number 6. Jimmy Havoc Horrific allegations made against Jimmy Havoc during the Speaking Out movement of Spring 2020, including domestic abuse, physical assault, and worse, led to the former Super Bad Squad member being released by the company that August. Initially set for counselling and rehabilitation while suspended by AEW, Havoc is no longer active in pro wrestling. The punishment dealt to this alleged abuser was one that should have been reflected elsewhere in the wrestling business as a consequence of speaking out. Number 5. Leo Rush Becoming a free agent on the 14th of February this year, Leo Rush's run as a contracted AEW wrestler barely lasted six months. Signed the previous September after debuting at Double or Nothing, where he was injured in the Casino Battle Royale that he entered as the Joker, Leo had actually been off TV for a little while prior to his official departure, having last wrestled for AEW on the 8th of December episode of Dynamite. An unfortunate turn of events, really, and 
one that has continued since then, with Leo recently suffering another injury while working PWG's Battle of Los Angeles in January, shelving his career for an undisclosed period of time. Here's to a speedy recovery, because the guy's far too talented to be sidelined for too long. Number 4. Ivelisse. Though she debuted for AEW in 2019, Ivelisse didn't start picking up more regular bookings there until 2020, when she won the Deadly Draw Tag Tournament alongside partner Diamante. Unfortunately, that September, she and Thunder Rosa had a match that, being polite, didn't quite go to plan. An apparent backstage disagreement spilled into the ring, and watching it, there were clearly periods of one side not cooperating with the other, and it wasn't bundled. The Rosa. Let go by AEW due to reported issues with coaches in April 2021, Ivelisse put out a statement alleging mistreatment. Given her questionable reliability as a narrator, it's probably best to take that one with a giant handful of salt. Number 3. Kylie Ray. While it initially looked like Kylie Ray was being set up to play a big role as an early face of AEW's women's division, she formally departed the company early in its run, with Tony Khan describing the split as very amicable. Details were few on the ground. But Kylie later stated that nobody made her leave, however, and it soon became clear that the dumb conspiracy theories that emerged online following her departure were just that. Dumb. Kylie has since worked for such promotions as Impact Wrestling and the NWA, taking several breaks from the sport for health reasons. This, of course, is far more important than anything that has ever gone on in a wrestling ring, and in January, she celebrated 90 days sober. Number 2. Ben Carter a bit of a cheat entry here, as Ben Carter was never truly employed by AEW, but he did catch the eye when wrestling for the promotion in September 2020, particularly for his awesome match with Scorpio Sky on Late Night Dynamite. Visa issues unfortunately prevented AEW from being legally allowed to pay Carter. Later, he ended up signing for WWE, which had always been a dream of his. And while there was all this talk of him being poached away, Vince McMahon's company actually made their approach to Carter before he turned up in AEW. Today, you can catch him on NXT UK as Nathan Fraser. Bad name, good wrestler. And at number one, Big Swole. Easily the most publicized AEW departure to date, Big Swole confirmed in November 2021 that, after much consideration, she and AEW had come to the mutual agreement that her expiring contract wasn't going to be renewed, effectively making her a free agent. A few weeks later, the incident caught fire. Citing her perceived lack of diversity in AEW as one of the driving factors behind the decision, as well as some structural issues, Swole's reasonable, fair, and well explained criticisms were met by Tony Khan claiming that he let Swole go because, in his words, he felt her wrestling wasn't good enough. Khan responding to Swole's comments on such an important matter like a gotten to message board poster is probably something he regrets in private. And at the end of the day, all he really had to do was not tweet. But anyway guys, that's our list, so tell us what you think down in the comment section below. After that, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. Then, you can follow us on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE and myself at AndyHMurray, where you can tell me how wrong I am. Goodbye.